Hey everybody, it's Dr. Eric Balkhouse. We're back for another edition of Thyroid Thursday. And today I'm talking about T2. Listen, um, I don't know what happened in the last week, but I've been getting lots of questions and contacts from people saying, hey, this person's saying t that T2 is the solution for my thyroid problems. T2 is the what uh, the person who's fixing thyroids is recommending. This person is a thyroid specialist. They're recommending T2. Um, look, at the end of the day, if you take T4 and you feel great, that's the right thing for you. If you take T3 and you feel great and function well, that's great, that's the right thing for you. If you're taking T4, T3 combination and you feel awesome, your labs are normal, that's great, that's the right thing for you. If you decide that you need T4, T3, and T2 and you feel functionally great, all labs are normal, awesome. I don't care what you take, but I don't think that taking uh, high dose T3 or T2 is the solution to fix thyroid physiology for the vast majority of people. Let me explain. So your thyroid gland makes primarily T4. It makes a, a primarily T4, it makes some T3, and then it makes, there's some T1, T2, and some other things that your thyroid gland makes. But let's just talk about T4 today because that's the primary hormone that enters the bloodstream. T4 then has to be converted, once it gets to the cells, into the active hormone T3, or, the cells can deactivate that T4 into something called reverse T3. Now, what determines whether you convert T4 to T3 or T4 to reverse T3? It's based on what's happening at the cell level. Cells get determined their metabolism. So they have enzymes inside the cell. So as T4 and T3 come into the cell, it can either activate T4 to T3 or it can deactivate T4 to reverse T3 and T3 to T2. So. Cells get to determine. Why do cells get determined? Because they know what they need to do. Do I need to increase my metabolism or do I need to decrease my, my metabolism? So we don't want that only being influenced by the amount of thyroid hormone in the bloodstream or how much the thyroid gland makes. We want cells to be able to have some individual control because if it was just based on how much was in the bloodstream, then the metabolism of all the cells and all the tissues would be upregulated all at the same time. So when you needed to go run, your bowels would move and you'd poop yourself. You don't want that. Okay, so cells get to determine. So when T4 gets converted to reverse T3, this is a, a hormone that does not bind to the T3 nuclear receptor. So it has, doesn't have much of an effect. It can have an effect on the outside of the cells. That's another discussion, another talk. T3 goes to the liver, gets metabolized out of the body. T, reverse T3 can, all, can be converted to this thing called 3 3 prime T2, which can be metabolized out of the body, but inside the cell, it could have a blocking effect at the thyroid receptor because it can bind to that thyroid receptor. T3, once it gets into the cell, either directly or by conversion of T4 to T3, that can bind to the nuclear receptor and stimulate metabolism. It can also be deactivated or metabolized to something called 3,5-T2. And this has some biologic effects that have been shown to be positive. Um, it doesn't bind very well at, to the thyroid receptor. Matter of fact, this guy binds much better than this guy to the thyroid receptor, but that has been shown to have some be be beneficial effects. So should you take it? Well, I look at, if this is a cell under stress, T4 is being converted to some reverse T3. There's still some T3 in the cell. The T3, if deiodinase 3 is out, that deiodinase 3 can deactivate can deactivate T3 to T2. So if I'm deactivating T3 to T2, then what this hormone or this T2 can act almost like a backup to the cell to really still stimulate some mitochondrial function, to make some energy function, to run a couple different functions in the cell. So I always look at this as a backup generator, but I don't look at it as the solution to actually fix thyroid physiology. So now that this T2 is available in supplemental form, Here's what the scenario it looks like, and I think where the functional medicine world is kind of going crazy with telling everybody they should take it. We have a hypothyroid patient, somebody's tired, fatigued, they don't feel good, they don't feel well, they go into their primary care, their TSH is high, their, their free T4 is low, they get diagnosed with hypothyroidism. They get put on T4 medication, they feel good for a while because they didn't have any thyroid hormone, but then they plateau. So now they go back to the primary care, puts them on a stronger dose, they feel better, and then they plateau. They go back to their primary care or endocrinologist, get a stronger dose, they feel better, and then they plateau. And now they go back, the doctor says, well, 
let's give you a stronger dose. And they go through this up and down with the doses to try and manipulate TSH into a functional, into a range that they're happy with and to kind of manage your symptoms. But it doesn't work well, people get frustrated. Even though TSH is really low and T4 is high, they still don't feel well. So they get frustrated and they head off to the integrative or functional medicine practitioner who says, well, you went to a traditional medical doctor, endocrinologist, they didn't run a very good panel. They didn't run thyroid antibodies. So they look at your, they run your thyroid antibodies. They may be positive. They say, here, here's what you have. You don't have primary hypothyroidism. You have Hashimoto's thyroiditis. That's an autoimmune condition. And so what we need to do is address your immune system, which I think is great, right? We should be looking for the reason why that's occurring. But the, to be fair, the allopathic physician likely already knew they had thyroiditis, already suspected it, but doesn't have a tool in the toolbox to address it. So he says, look, you have thyroid, he would probably say, hey, I know you have thyroiditis. I know it's immune driven. There's nothing I can do. It's idiopathic. So I'm just gonna give you the T4 that your thyroid gland can't make anymore, okay? The functional integrative practitioner may also say, oh, they did also, they didn't run a full thyroid panel because they didn't run T3 or free T3 or reverse T3. So they're gonna look at your thyroid panel and say, you're on this T4 med, your reverse T3 is high, your T3 is low, that's why you don't feel good. And some of those functional medicine practitioners or integrative practitioners will tell you that this reverse T3 is actually blocking T3 from binding to the receptors. That's not true. Um, and so what they'll say is, look, your body has forgotten how to convert T4 to T3, is instead converting T4 to reverse T3. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna, we're not gonna worry about T4, we're either gonna give you all additional T3 to make up what your body's not making, or we're just gonna forget T4 altogether. We're just gonna put you on high dose T3 and that will that'll get rid of this problem of T4 converting to T3 because they think that reverse T3 is blocking T3. Not the case. Cells determine what happens, right? So if a cell in danger, it does not wanna increase its metabolism, it wants to downregulate metabolism, so it's gonna convert T4 to reverse T3, it's gonna convert, deactivate T3 to T2. And so now, if you have a stress situation going on, you weren't converting T4 to T3, you were converting to reverse T3, you were deactivating that essentially, and now I just load you with a whole bunch of T3, what do you think is gonna to happen to the T3? The body's still gonna deactivate that, it's gonna start deactivating that to T2. Now, your reverse T3 will go down because you don't have T4 as the starting point, and but this was never having, really having a significant blocking effect. Your body just wasn't converting T4 to T3. You need to ask the question, is this broken physiology like your body forgot how to do it, or is this adaptive physiology, which is my argument? I Sure, we can give you T3, and sure, we can normalize your, your T3 levels in the bloodstream. That doesn't mean we fix the tissue hypothyroid status because if I'm the cell and I don't want thyroid hormone, yes, T3 is gonna cross into the cell, but now I've gotta deactivate the T3 as well. And since we're not measuring T2 to find out what's happening to it, we just, people are making assumption that that's the fix until people wind up on both high dose T4, T3, high dose T3, combinate or just high dose T3 by themselves and still feel lousy. Right? They still have hypo, they still feel hypothyroid. You may feel hypo and hyper. And so now what physicians are saying in this space is saying, hey, since you still feel hypothyroid, the T4 is not working, the T3 is not working, we're gonna give you T2 now, and that'll fix it, right? Listen, you might feel better. And even you, you might feel temp better temporarily. And maybe you're that's all you need. But is that really addressing the, the issue. And I would argue it's not addressing the issue. It's not addressing the root issue. It's not addressing the question, is this broken or adaptive? It's a, if it's adaptive physiology to cell stress, increasing metabolism of the cell in a stress condition does not help. It actually could harm the cell. So this, this is not a functional medicine approach. This is greenwashing. We're just using a different drug to make you feel better. And if that's what you want, that's great, but that isn't what functional medicine is supposed to be. Functional medicine is supposed to be about helping you identify the root cause. Identify the root causes, remove or eliminate those root causes or reduce them as much as possible so we can support the recovery of normal, adapt, normal physiology. So it's a band-aid, and at some point, if that's not gonna work either, and you're gonna be back to the same question, 
Why is this not working? 